Hello, we are here in this charming and beautiful cafe in the lovely city of Oberammergau in southern Germany. I'm here with the director of the Oberammergau Passion Play, Mr. Markus Zwink. Yes, uh, exactly. I am the musical director, not the director of the whole cast, just the musical director of the Passion Play of Oberammergau. Because the music is all we're interested in right now. <laughs> <laughs> the music okay. is the best part, isn't it? Ah. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's a, a common work, and it works with living pictures. It works with the whole cast. Is it works with the atmosphere in the open air, and it works with the music, of course. Well, let's begin at the beginning. Back in 1633, the residents of this tiny village were experiencing the bubonic plague. They go to God and they promise that if He will spare them they will present the story of his life and death and resurrection forever in drama. And it happened. They were spared. And so here we are now, almost 400 years later, with uh, this incredible play going on. Why do you think that it has lasted so long with all of these changes in the world? In the whole area of the Alps, there were a lot of passion plays. Uh, about three, four hundred villages, the inhabitants promised to, to do this. And in Oberammergau, we had a, a special situation because they promised it every ten years to do it. And for that, it's like uh, the old Greeks with uh, their Olympic plays. The people here, they began to think in these decades. They said, my life before the Passion Play, my life after the Passion Play. And so it uh, grew up and was very important for them. And of course, a lot of people of the uh, whole region wanted to see it. And it grew up to be more and more public and important. The inhabitants forced to do it every uh, 10 years again, 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 and, and again. And now it's the most important thing for Oberammergau, what they have in their life. So, yes, and, and so let's talk about that for a minute. The very first ones, they would, they would put on a passion play, maybe for a day or maybe a two-day event. Eventually it grew into many more performances, and now it's over 100? It's over 100. The premiere was on the 15th of May, and the last play is on the uh, 4th of October and we do it five times a week. It lasts nearly six hours, so it's a full-time job. <laughs> Goodness gracious! I mean, any conductor uh, would uh, certainly rather be here in a cafe than <laughs> conducting, well, I don't know, maybe not, six hours a day, five days a week. And, and so therefore, with, a, with an audience of right around 5,000, between 4,000 and 5,000, that adds up to half a million people. Yes, that's nearly a half a million people. And we had that also in 1960, 1970, 80, 19, two, uh, 2000. We always had nearly a half a million visitors. Now you've talked a little bit about the fact that this is a very personal thing for the, the people of Oberammergau. You yourself started off probably as a child, performed in a couple of performances, and now you're the director. And your daughter, daughter or daughters are in the production as well. It, do you find that lots of families get involved and, and do this as a generational thing? Yes, of course, it's very important for the kids who come new in, into the play and they don't know it, that their parents tell them, listen, that's a really great thing. You have to learn an instrument. You go into a choir and you have to learn sing, that you are really um, prepared for your part in the play. Right, because this entire thing is, in fact, for lack of a better word, amateur. The orchestra, everyone who's performing are all just people who are in the village and ordinarily their jobs are doing other things, psychologists and uh, people who own shops, but then they come together and put on really quite a remarkable production. I was there Saturday and I must say it was very impressive. The start of our uh, rehearsals um, is about two years before 
and we really want to make it nearly professional. We know that we can't do it professional because yes, we are amateurs, but we try to be prepared uh, every 10 years that we are open for these visitors and that we can do it in a really nearly professional way. Well, let's talk about the music. Back in uh, right around maybe 200 years ago, a villager by the name of Rolchus Dedler, did I say the name right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> was a, a very good uh, composer mm -hmm. and composed a whole new set of music to go along with uh, the play. The play itself is spoken and then there are little tableaus that are just living scenes the way that I think most of us would recognize uh, the way you would do a, a nativity scene or something and then there the chorus comes forward almost like a Greek chorus to perform this uh, quite beautiful music that was written uh, roughly during the time of Haydn Mozart and that has been going on to this day but it's not exactly the music that he wrote correct you've edited it some yes uh, this music how you said it's a bit after Haydn uh, in, in the time of Schubert and he was a, a realistic composer he wrote it for the people of the village he knew his his uh, musicians his his singers he himself conducted he was the bass soloist he spoke the prologue and his part is the uh, most difficult oh. part and uh, this was performed on the churchyard with a few singers, 12 singers in the choir and uh, about 12 instrumentalists. So a really tiny group of musicians. And when they had to change the place of performance, now they are here on the Passion Playhouse. Uh, in the 19th century, it was just a meadow, but with 5,000 visitors, Per performance, the orchestra grew up, the choir grew up, and uh, they have to change the instrumentation. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the director said, okay, this tableau uh, will be changed, there was no music for it. And so other uh, directors have to write new music, and it was also my part in 2000 to compose new music and also for this play in 2010 I had to compose a few scenes. So now and, and the music that you are when you are arranging and composing new music to put in it's all very much in the style in the original yes. style of Roca Stedler. Yes it is. Um, I just uh, changed a little bit the harmonization but you're right it's kind in, in, in style of uh, early 19th century, early romantic style. And that kind of reminds me, as I look around the city, I see freshly painted houses that are still painted in the traditional manner uh, from, from centuries back. So maybe that's a, a value that goes to the very roots of, of Oberammergau. Yes, one of my uh, pre-pre-pre-grandfathers uh, uh, Franz Seraf Zwink is the most uh, famous uh, painter of, of these houses. A very special, a typical thing of Obramagau. Well, there's one spot in the music that to my ear, as I was listening Saturday, sounded dramatically different than the rest of it. And uh, it is the part where they uh, do the, a traditional Hebrew Jewish blessing and so there's a, a little bit of the Eastern scale that we associate with that. Now the, did you compose that part? Yes, I, I did that and it was a very uh, important decision to do that. Um, in autumn, in last autumn we were in Israel and saw the situation there with the